That's a really good question. There's a lot more to this Jodan no Kamai, or some call He no Kamai. Jodan means high posture, or sometimes you hear it called Dai Jodan, great high posture, or He no Kamai, which is this fire pose, fire posture. The way you hold this Kamai can depend a lot on the period of Japanese history. Right now I'm using this older Tachi sword, which is much older than kind of the modern Kendo or Kenjutsu sword that you see from the Edo period. In the more modern times, you might see the Kashira, the butt cap, held up here like this. Many reasons for this. One of them could be that the sun is in your eyes and this gives you a bit of a shadow under here. What you were asking, if you hold the sword straight up, the opponent can see the length, and that's a huge thing in strategy. So if the opponent can see how tall the sword is, that's a disadvantage for me. So often I tell my students to hold it more of an angle, about 45 degrees, sometimes 60 degrees. Not back here, that's too far. And I often say, put the suba guard near your head here. It's a bit lower, it hides your identity. You would often see them holding it on their helmet here so that they could use the helmet to push or to accelerate the forward movement of this Jodan no Kamai. Now often I'll interchange Jodan with this Kama here. This is also called Jodan, but it's not over the head. If I'm here over my head and I'm sideways and I have friends behind me, well, do you think it's possible that I might go back and stab my friend who's right next to me or hit a horse or something like that? So the idea of being here with your helmet with limited vision is I could see more and I could know where my blade was, where it's down just a touch lower and to the side. If I had a large helmet on, the Fukigaeshi, I might be hitting these little winglets that are sticking off to the side if I'm here. A lot of helmets had these giant Maidate crests here, so if I'm here, I might get stuck in those crests. I might knock my helmet off, get stuck in the Maidate. So again, the helmet dictates where you hold your Jodan. What if I'm holding a flag on my back? You've seen these Sashimono, big flag holders. They would have a flag on their back like this, and they would have a banner. The reason for the banner was often the armor didn't match, and the banner kind of had your logo. The flag might have the crest of your clan. So to have my flag here, does it make sense to be in this Jodan or this Dai Jodan hitting my flagpole left and right, even if I don't have a helmet on? I'm restricted to which way I can move because I'm knocking my flag around. Therefore, this higher Jodan over here to the side of the helmet makes more sense if I'm on a horse or if I'm a foot soldier in Ashigaru. This might make more sense to have the Jodan here rather than here interfering with my helmet or my flag. So as you can see, as with all things in Budo, the more you know about history, about what the armor was at the time, and the customs and culture, these simple stances can become five or six layers deep. So if you're gonna do Dai Jodan here, perfectly fine. Or full armor, I might be here if I'm riding a horse, or if I have a flag on my back, the Jodan might be here versus here. Do you have the Suba guard here or up here? Are your elbows in, are your elbows out? All of these things have a strength and a weakness to them. So what I would suggest is ask. Ask your teacher, that's what they're there for. Often people wonder the answers because they're too embarrassed or afraid to ask. Ask your teacher, teacher, why do you want me at a 90 and not a 45 or a 60? Why is it here instead of here? Could it be resting on my helmet or should it be up high? Should my elbows be in, should they be up? Should I do a left a Hidari or should I do a right Jodan or both? The more books I read on samurai and ninja and the culture of Japan, the deeper my education goes and I'm still learning after 45 years. The more seminars you go to, the more time on the mat, the more that you hold weaponry, the more teachers that you study with, the more styles that you buy DVDs or videos of, the more you study on the internet, the more history and culture that you study, there will not be enough time in our lifetime to understand the full depths of this beautiful weapon and all it entails. And that's why I love the martial arts just as much as you do. Learning never stops. That was a great question, Grayson, on Jodan no Kamai, Dai Jodan or He, the Fire Kamai of Kenjutsu. Keep those fantastic questions coming, everybody. We'll see you on the next Dojo Martial Arts video. Thanks for watching and good training to you.